Hello fellow woodworkers, welcome to this week's edition of the Garage Workshop and the second video in my Mitre Saw Station series. Let's get started. So in this week's video, we're going to be finishing the Mitre Saw Station that I started a couple of weeks back. I've got some very specific things that I want to get through today. I'm going to put some drawers in this section. This section at the moment, I haven't 100% decided what I'm going to do with it. I've got three options. Number one, I can just leave it blank and store things in it. Number two, I can put some drawers in it. In order to do that though, I would need to get new drawer runners. And number three, I could put my uh, vacuum cleaner, my suction vacuum cleaner in it. I have to be honest, I'm not 100% sure at this stage what I'm going to do. It might just be okay as storage as it is. If I do decide to just leave it as storage, then what I'm going to do is put a door on it. Here I've got two uh, drawers that I want to make that are going to go into this gap. Again, I've only got one set of uh, drawer runners at present. I have ordered some more, but I'm going to go ahead and do the drawers anyway. And what I'm going to do is use these drawer runners that I've got, and I'm going to get all the spacings right, get all the fixings all ready in place so that when they come I can literally just slot them in. I'm even going to be brave enough to build the drawer that's going to go in them as well because to be honest with you it's pretty straightforward it's just going to be a duplication of what I'm going to do here. The first thing I'd like to do is go around and take out care of all of these uh, holes where I put the brad nails in. Now the finishing of this I've thought quite a lot about what I want to do and to be honest I think I'm just going to put oil on it uh, I've got some board linseed oil and I've got that on some other units in the garage workshop and I just really like the finish of it. It gives it enough of a protection for what I need. So I think I'm going to do that. But I do want this surface to be nice. The other thing is I have got a little ridge down here where I join the wood, which um, I didn't notice the first time around. So I am going to sort of knock that back when I sand it. So I will just give this a little light uh, sanding. I might even just varnish this piece of wood. We'll, we'll see how it goes because essentially this is what you're going to see. It's going to be slightly different to that but I don't want to layer the whole thing in varnish. So first thing to do is fill all these holes then I'm going to start creating the drawers and then we'll make a decision on what we're going to do here before we replace it. Now the last thing obviously this unit is going to replace the unit I've currently got. I've got like a little hood over uh, my uh, mitre saw at the moment. I'm going to be honest with you, I really don't like it. It does sort of does its job, but it's not very effective. So I think an upcoming project on the garage workshop is going to be a new hood. And I sort of have got an idea where I'd like potentially to create a bigger hood that's got some storage in it, possibly even incorporate my uh, drills into it. I've got a bit of time to think about that because at the moment this is the focus. But the other thing I need to do is build in some dust extraction. Now on the top of this uh, unit, I've left, specifically left like a flat shelf behind the worktop. I did that on purpose because I wanna have the flexibility to put in a bigger capacity hose. One of my problems with my current mitre saw station is I've literally just got a normal everyday domestic hose going into it and it's just not powerful enough and quite often when I'm cutting wood I'm getting dust falling back through the cover where it should be sucked out of and um, it puts too much pressure on the, the tiny little vac shop vac I've got there. I've just got a little Titan shop vac in there so what I'm going to do is reuse my uh, bigger shop vac that I've currently got attached to my duct system I'm going to use that but I can either keep it in the unit where it is now where the other one is it will fit or I could potentially incorporate it into here. The only disadvantage of incorporating it into there is obviously it's gonna take up a significant bit of room, but the plan over the next few weeks is to replace all of these units. So it might be the time to do that then. But as I said, we've got a little bit of time uh, to think about that, I think. The other thing that I could potentially do, knowing that I'm gonna do that, is maybe recycle some of my drawer slides. I've got some bloom drawer slides uh, that are in that unit as well. It might be that I just pop that drawer off and just rest the drawer on the bottom of the unit so that I can recycle um, the slides. These aren't bloom ones and I put a link to these in last week's description. These drawer slides are actually ones that I picked up from Peter uh, Millard's video but to be honest with you 
They look identical in every way to my bloom one. So we'll get fixing those in a minute and see how they go on. But the first thing is just to fill all of these holes in. Now, I have brought a new product. I've never used this before. And one of the things I'll be really keen to do is get your feedback as Garage Workshop users and viewers of what uh, wood filler you use. This is the Ron Seal Multipurpose uh, wood filler. I bought it in screw fix and I think it was £5.99 uh, for a little 250 gram pot. Now I made the mistake previously of buying a big pot of this which was a financial error because eventually it just went dried and when it, didn't, it went dried and cracked and even when I took the dry bits off it just was never the same product. So I've deliberately gone for a smaller one. Um, I've never used this product before and the only reason I bought it is it had fantastic feedback. So let me know in the comments what uh, wood filler you use. Do you use a mixture of um, wood glue and sawdust? Do you use a special product? Do you use a cheaper brand? Or do you use something like Ronsil? So let me know what product you use. But I have to say the reviews are pretty good. So let's crack this tin open now, crack this tub open now and let's get filling those holes. So apologies in advance for what's going to be a lot of talking. Uh, there was a huge amount of filming in this pro project, uh, over 60 gigs in total, um, cut down into 60 minutes. So after I'd fi finished the holes, um, I got the draw runners uh, ready to go. I just used a piece of MDF um, as a marker out. I wanted to sort of bring them out either side so they fitted within the um, the frame at the front. And obviously, normally you do this and then put the frame on the front, but I did it the other way. And when I was happy that I'd got an equal amount on both sides, I just put some glue on and uh, tacked it in just with some brad nails um, and then I used a couple of spacers one underneath to just raise the drawers up and one in from the side just to make sure there was enough room for the face plate of the drawer. Um, I then just hooked them in pre-drilling all of the holes as you can see I had to be very careful there because the internal wall is only 12 mil um, hard plywood so I used smaller self-tapping screws on one side than I did on the other but once I got the drawers in, um, as you can see, they looked absolutely perfect. I laid them, set them back a bit because I wanted to make the drawer bigger. Um, that actually turned out to be a bit of a mistake, which you'll see in a minute. But um, the, the thought was there. <laughs> the problem was it was the execution of the drawers, which um, I unfortunately got uh, incorrect, meaning I had to do uh, something I didn't want to do. The next thing to do was uh, measure it and then I started cutting out uh, the individual pieces uh, for the drawer and actually I bought this uh, sheet of plywood and I decided that the drawer was going to be a little bit defined by the sheet of plywood because the cost of plywood at the moment is so expensive. Uh, when I'd done that I did the two uh, ends, I got everything I needed to do and then I literally started to hook uh, the drawer together just to dry fit to make sure all was okay, which it was. Uh, and then I ran it through um, the table saw and this is my uh, six millimeter blade that's cutting a sort of dado um, into uh, the drawer. Always very careful uh, using that blade, to be honest, it, it, is, it can be a bit, a bit difficult using it. So uh, after that, I just knocked everything out um, just to get the edges nice and straight. It was a fairly clean cut, but I wanted it nice and smooth. Uh, and then I marked on, and this is where I made my first sort of real uh, mistake. I cut the two wedges out, but what I hadn't accounted for is the draw sinking in. So what I should have done is made the, fa fa the front page part of the door that you can see now should have obviously been deeper and it wasn't but I did manage to get a way around that uh, eventually but next thing I did was hook the drawer uh, together I used a combination of pre-drilled holes uh, and glue then I made the insert for the inside of it um, as you can see a really nice um, fit we well, would see if I've got the camera in the right uh, direction but it was a really good fit and I was very pleased with the strength of it. Then um, I hooked on the front um, of the drawer and screwed it into place. And this, you should be able to see, this is where the problem is. That drawer should be overhanging on the front, not level, not flush. Um, and obviously I didn't realise that until the first time I actually offered it up. And I, I was a bit like, why is this not working? Um, and then, of course, I realised the mistake I made. So I had to do something which looks a bit dodgier 
than it is. But having watched uh, Jason's video on the bur bourbon moth um, woodworking about his whiskey cabinet, I decided to just run the whole thing through uh, the table saw. It's not as sketchy as it looks, but it was a bit uh, risky. Uh, then I just put some pencil uh, on the edge of the drawers and I got that tip from Peter Millard so thanks Peter for that. Um, and the next stage was to fit the shelf. I went for a shelf because having thought about it I'd get a lot more use out of a shelf than I would out of a second drawer and my other unit that I'm going to replace is going to be filled of drawers anyway. So I got a spare piece of uh, an off cut of um, plywood cut it down and then I got a piece of uh, hardwood and cut that down and I used this as a sort of two shelf brackets effectively, uh, pre-drawed them uh, and fixed them in and then put the 12 mil plywood on the top and it was really sturdy. I couldn't get over how uh, sturdy and strong it is. It's, it's easily going to be strong enough for what I need. So when I hook those uh, in it came flush almost uh, with the face frame. Uh, there was just a little bit of a, a ridge. I mean, I did decide I didn't like the look of the gap. Um, so I did drop it down off camera. Um, and then I decided to put a little frame uh, in above the drawer because I really didn't like how it looked. Uh, the next stage was to unhook my uh, mitre saw. Um, I then cut out the uh, worktop and I got my big... Uh, big beefy uh, router out for that and this was to allow my dust collector to go in it was just a bit too big so I just hollowed out a little bit to fit it in um, the next thing I decided to do was raise up um, the top to allow for another uh, draw unit which you'll see in a minute I'm just getting the um, dimensions there to make sure I've got it right uh, then I drilled the holes and you can already see the the block there lifting it up that's just a temporary measure so I drilled all the holes in uh, which I pre-marked to fit the mitre so it's all completely level flush exactly the same on the right side and the left side I then pre-drilled some holes uh, forgetting to use my wooden block and just attach them using uh, some screws just a bit careful here I went for screws which you know may not have given me the best purchase but they did move around a bit hence the uh, clamp so I did, first I did the left side, then I just duplicated exactly the thing on the right side. And remember that gap at the back that you can see is for my dust collection. And I specifically left a gap. Again, I used two pieces of wood to allow for the drawer. And I put in these extendable uh, table slides. I got these from Amazon ages ago. I was going to get them to put in the description, but they don't seem to sell them anymore. Uh, but there is quite, uh, it, it's quite an extension. It's got like a two sort of system and it comes out quite a long way. So when I hooked those, it was just a case of uh, tapping uh, down the top. And I used these metal brackets that I had lying around. There's two reasons I use this. You can see it's overhanging. That's to stop the drawer. When I make the drawer, that's to keep the drawer from sliding back. And obviously, they're really, really strong. So they'll keep it together. I then offered up uh, the mitre saw and got it exactly uh, right. I just put a little... A metal um, washer under each bit just to raise it off um, a little bit more and when that was all nice and done I just cut this temporarily blank piece of wood just to cover the gap where the drawer is going to be. Uh, next I went on to the two leveling bits that I mentioned in the first video. Um, by now I'd got them to the right size exactly as I wanted them to be and after a couple of little back and forth which is taking off uh, little bits and bobs here and there. I got them on and I actually decided to friction fit these because it was such a tight fit. I didn't think I really needed to do anything else and you can see there how hard I'm whacking them in but obviously they needed a bit of support so I went back to the table saw which I used loads in this video. I uh, went back to the table saw, just cut down a couple of strips um, and then cut them in half, gave them a quick rub over um, and then got the pocket holes up, pocket holes again in the video, um, just got some pocket holes in them, uh, attached them uh, to the bottom using the pocket hole screws and then I literally just friction fitted uh, the two wedges either side making sure they were really level. I was so pleased with how that turned out. They were really really good and they're strong, they're not going anywhere so really really pleased with how that turned out. Just leveling them up and using my level to make sure they're completely straight, which they are, one side then the other. 
So fellow woodworkers, we have got to the end of a marathon uh, build on my Mitosaur uh, station. If you're still watching, thank you so much uh, for tuning in for both of these. And as you can see, the Mitosaur station is finished. I'm very, very pleased with how it's turned out. A couple of little things. The first one, uh, down here obviously you can see I've got my dust extraction. Um, it's not actually completely up and running yet. I've ordered a new uh, tube from Amazon because I just had like a domestic hose in it before and now I've got my more industrial shop back in there. I need a wider cable and I haven't got that. And I've also got a fabricate on a 3D printer, a new uh, connector or nozzle uh, for it to connect it, but it's all ready to go. Um, I put on these little guides and as you saw in the um, film, I haven't actually screwed them in, I've just friction fitted them. They're not going anywhere. They're absolutely rock solid and I'm pleased with how it's worked out because now I've got a complete level, 100% carry all the way across and I'm gonna um, get a little ruler and put it on here as well. So when it goes into place, when I've redone all of the uh, Mitosaur station that's there, it should look absolutely fantastic and give me much better quality cuts. The one thing that is missing is obviously this panel as you saw. Um, the reason is I haven't got enough of the wood that I need to make the drawer uh, that will go in there. So the only thing that's going to go in there is a little pull out uh, drawer which I will do. But I'm really really pleased with how it's turned out. It's turned out exactly how I thought or hoped it would uh, in my mind. It's all completely level, it's completely true. It's probably uh, the best thing I think that I've made um, in one go uh, so far. It's got the drawer, I went for the shelf um, under the drawer because I've got quite a lot of tools that I'd like to put in there that I need quick access to. So that was the reason that I went for that. But overall, I'm really, really uh, pleased with it. I'm sorry it's such a mammoth video series and obviously the drawer's not done. I might film that and do it as a short, but Thank you so much for joining me. If this is your first time at the Garage Workshop, please can ask you to subscribe, like and comment. If you're a regular viewer, you know the drill. Please like, please comment. Uh, I'd be really interested to get your feedback on it. I, had, I think I had about 450 odd views of the first one, so please feel free to do that. And after having a rest in a darkened room for a few weeks, I'll catch you next week on the next installment of the Garage Workshop. Take care, fellow woodworkers.